Hi, everybody, and welcome to session 10 of the CLEI Center for Keratoconus uh, video blog. Uh, today, I want to talk about the U.S. multi center clinical trial of corneal collagen cross linking for keratoconus, uh, the U.S. study that led uh, to recent FDA approval. The U.S. clinical trials were started back in uh, 2008, and I had the privilege to be the medical monitor uh, for uh, these clinical studies. We were all happy uh, to have achieved FDA approval uh, last year, and I really think that this brings a great new innovation uh, for uh, patients who have progressive uh, keratoconus. Uh, recently, the results of this study were published in the journal uh, Ophthalmology. Uh, all of you can access this uh, on the internet. What I wanted to do today was quickly review uh, some of the important points uh, that we learned in, in the study. This study was done amongst 10 study centers in uh, the U.S. The inclusion criteria were patients with progressive keratoconus. So we needed uh, to show that those patients treated were indeed getting worse over the previous two years. Uh, we restricted it to patients 14 years old or older, uh, and this is the reason, incidentally, uh, that the FDA approval is for keratoconus patients who are 14 or over. The procedure that we used was the standard uh, collagen cross-linking protocol originally uh, developed uh, in Germany. It uses the Avidro system with initial removal of the surface epithelial cells. We then administer riboflavin drops every two minutes for 30 minutes to soak into the cornea. And then you look up at an ultraviolet light for 30 minutes uh, as well. This is done at a specific wavelength and power uh, shown to be effective to strengthen the cornea and decrease keratoconic progression. There were 205 patients who were treated in this study. The study was randomized. That is, one group of patients received the standard cross-linking treatment, whereas the other group did not receive treatment. This let us compare study groups that were equivalent, one of which received treatment with cross-linking and the other uh, which simply followed the natural progression of keratoconus over the course of a year. The primary purpose, as you know, of cross-linking is to decrease progression of keratoconus. Keratoconus is a progressive disorder, and if we can slow or stop the progression, uh, this will uh, certainly make the prognosis uh, much better. We used as our primary efficacy criteria the height of the keratoconic cone. Uh, many of you are familiar with corneal topography. This is like looking at a mountain range from a satellite, blue being low, green in between, and red being high. So the redder and higher the topography in keratoconus, uh, the worse is the keratoconic cone. In the study, we measured efficacy by change in the height of the keratoconic cone comparing the treatment group to the control group. So if the procedure were efficacious, we'd expect little change in the topography or even improvement. If the pre procedure were not efficacious, we would see continued increase in the height of the keratoconus cone. So what were the results? The primary result was very striking. The treatment group improved, that is, the cone flattened on average by a little over one and a half diopters. A diopteric value is a value of steepness of the central cornea. The control group, in contrast, continued to progress. 
by approximately one diopter. So there was a significant difference in those patients who were treated over the course of a year to those patients who were not. Now looking at this next chart, we can see that not everybody uh, improves with cross-linking. In the middle, we see patients who remain the same. On the left are patients who actually did get better. And on the right are patients who continue to progress even after the cross-linking procedure. Now, we don't know whether the progression in these patients was a slowdown or actually progressed uh, at its normal uh, rate. But certainly looking at the group of patients that we treated, for the most part, the keratoconus appears to have a great improvement uh, in the progression with good stabilization. We also looked at visual acuity. Again, cross-linking is not designed to improve vision. It's only designed to decrease keratoconic progression. But we did find happily that there was on average approximately one line on the visual acuity chart of improvement. Again, we see that most patients in the center of the chart here remain the same. A number to the left of the chart improve rather substantially, and a few to the right have some loss of vision a year after the procedure. We also looked at visual function, that is visual side effects. You know that in keratoconus, there is a lot of static in your visual system. It's like having a lot of static on the TV. And this can cause difficulty, night driving, double vision, glare, and halo, things like that. Patients were given questionnaires before their treatment and afterwards. And we found that on average, a few of these difficulties did improve. These included difficulty driving, difficulty reading, improvement in double vision and fluctuation in vision, uh, and improvement in, in glare uh, at night. Uh, so uh, these were encouraging results uh, as well. Now what are the side effects that one can see in collagen cross-linking? Uh, number one, it takes a while for you to improve after the cross-linking procedure. Indeed, looking at this chart, the corneal topography can actually get a little worse early on before it improves over the next six months. So you need to be aware that it takes a little bit of while for your vision uh, to return to baseline after the cross-linking procedure. We've also noticed, as seen on this next slide, that patients can see some corneal haze afterwards. We can see it under magnification, and some patients will notice that the vision is a little hazy. Somewhat like driving on a rainy day with a fogged windshield uh, after the procedure. Uh, mostly this does not affect your visual function, and mostly this improves over the course of weeks uh, to months. So in conclusion then, I think that the U.S. clinical trial showed that cross-linking is a safe and effective treatment to decrease keratoconic progression. Uh, you certainly need to be aware of the healing course afterwards and some of the side effects uh, that might occur. But as we will see in our next talk, it is something that patients with keratoconus should consider. So So when we see you next week, let's discuss which patients with keratoconus should get cross-linking and are there some patients who should not undergo this procedure. Have a good weekend. Look forward to seeing you next week.